What if I told you that Michael Jordan, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, made a mistake in the NBA draft? Today, we're taking a closer look at one of the most talked about draft picks in recent NBA history. This decision raised eyebrows among fans and analysts alike and left many wondering why Jordan would pass up such a promising talent. And in this video, we'll examine the factors that led to this controversial decision and explore what could have been if Jordan had chosen differently. So, without further ado, let's dive right into it. The soon-to-be former team owner made a surprising choice by selecting Brandon Miller over Scoot Henderson, possibly prioritizing fit over talent. This decision could come to define Jordan's tenure. Despite Scoot Henderson being favored to follow in the footsteps of Victor Wembanyama, Brandon Miller was chosen as the second overall pick by the Charlotte Hornets. This selection positions the small forward from Alabama to play alongside LaMelo Ball, forming a dynamic offensive duo. The choice to pick Miller was influenced by the recommendation of the team's owner and legendary NBA player, Michael Jordan. Initially, it was believed that the Hornets were interested in Henderson, but ESPN reported that after a second private workout on Monday, it became clear that Miller was the best fit for the team. According to ESPN, the Hornets were fully committed to selecting Miller from the start. The ownership, front office, scouts, and coaches all view him as future all-star player who perfectly fits the franchise. However, during practice, Miller faced an embarrassing moment when Jordan airballed a shot. On the other hand, Henderson possesses the flash, power, pick-and-roll playmaking skills to make an immediate impact. His style of play draws comparisons to Russell Westbrook. If the rumored departure of Damian Lillard from the franchise comes to pass, Henderson has the potential to bring excitement to the team in Lillard's absence. It will be intriguing to see how these young talents, Miller and Henderson, shape their respective careers in the NBA and leave their mark on the basketball world. Inside Barclays Center on that unforgettable night, the spotlight was on Victor Wembanyama. Wembanyama posters filled the arena, fans donned Wembenyama jerseys, and there was even an emotional interview with the talented player. It seemed like Wembenyama's presence was everywhere, from the subway to Yankee Stadium. He was sharing his towering height, 7'3", as confirmed by Wembenyama himself, with a group of amazed elementary school kids at one moment, and dining with Robin Roberts in a pre-recorded segment the next. It was a fun and informative spectacle, but deep down, we all knew Wembenyama was destined for the San Antonio Spurs. The consensus around his potential as the top pick was unparalleled since the days of LeBron James. Over 12,000 fans gathered at the AT&T Center, eagerly watching the draft unfold on the colossal Jumbotron. And within minutes, the Spurs wasted no time in revealing Wembenyama's chosen jersey number, number one. The real draft commenced when the Charlotte Hornets were officially on the clock. For weeks leading up to the draft, rumors swirled about the Hornets' dilemma between selecting Miller or Henderson. Miller, often compared to the lanky and talented Paul George, possessed a polished three-point shot ready for the NBA stage. On the other hand, Henderson showcased a combination of Russell Westbrook's explosive athleticism and Chris Paul's clever playmaking. Days before the draft, Hornets GM Mitch Kupchak disclosed that the final decision would be made by none other than Michael Jordan himself, who had recently agreed to sell his majority stake in the franchise. And with the second pick, the Charlotte Hornets chose Brandon Miller. Soon after, the Portland Trailblazers eagerly scooped up Scoot Henderson as the third pick. It wasn't an easy decision, explained Hornets GM Mitch Kupchak, but we firmly believe that Brandon was our top choice all along. Only time will reveal the true impact of these draft picks. As fans, we eagerly await the unfolding of their careers and hope that the decision to select Miller will be remembered as a pivotal moment in the Hornets' quest for success. Scoot had an impressive average of 16.5 points during his one season with the G League Ignite. Last October, scouts were amazed when Henderson put up 28 points and 9 assists in an exhibition game. Now, this isn't to take anything away from Miller. He's really talented. In his single year at Alabama, Miller averaged 18.8 points and grabbed 8.8 .8 rebounds per game. He also showcased his shooting prowess by connecting on 38.4% of his three-point attempts. He effortlessly executes plays with dribble handoffs and looks like a seasoned pro in pick-and-pop situations. If Miller had been available at the third pick, you can bet Portland would have eagerly snatched him up. But here's the question. 
Do they truly believe that Miller is the best player or simply the best player to complement Ball? Three years ago, Charlotte used the third pick to draft Ball, and boy, did it pay off. Ball quickly proved himself, winning the Rookie of the Year award in his first season, becoming an All-Star in his second, and averaging a career high of 23.3 points in his third season, which unfortunately got cut short due to injury. He's only 21 years old and hasn't even reached his full potential. Drafting based on team needs can make sense to some extent, but it can also lead to disastrous consequences for a franchise. Back in 2008, the Milwaukee Bucks, who already had a solid center, chose Joe Alexander over players like Brooke Lopez and Roy Hibbert. In 2003, the Detroit Pistons infamously selected Darko Milicic instead of Carmelo Anthony, partly because they already had Tayshaun Prince. More recently, the Golden State Warriors, with their incredible backcourt, opted for James Wiseman over Ball. So, did the Hornets prioritize their needs over pure talent? Did it sway their decision making? Only the Hornets themselves know the answer to that. What we do know is that the fate of this choice was ultimately placed in the hands of Jordan, who is reportedly set to make a staggering $2 billion profit from the sale of the franchise. When it comes to his playing career, Michael Jordan is in a league of his own. But as a businessman and team executive, well, let's just say he hasn't quite hit the mark. To put it bluntly, Jordan's track record as an executive has been abysmal. His tenure with the Washington Wizards was marred by the ill-fated selection of Quaim Brown in the draft. And during his time overseeing basketball operations in Charlotte since 2006, the team has managed only three playoff appearances. Now, with one foot out the door, Jordan finds himself in a position to shape the future of the franchise. He likely envisions a dynamic duo formed by Ball and Miller, tearing through opponents with their speed on the fast break and dismantling defenses in half-court sets. Miller showcased his talent at Alabama, and leading up to the draft, he demonstrated some confidence by referring to Jordan as just a regular guy, and even declaring Paul George as the greatest of all time, rather than Jordan. I can bring a winning mentality, Miller confidently expressed to reporters. I'm committed to making winning plays both on and off the court. So yeah, a winner. Only time will tell if Miller lives up to his words. He and Henderson are now forever linked, much like Greg Oden and Kevin Durant or Luka Doncic and Trey Young. Their success or failure will be a reflection of Jordan's executive legacy. If Miller proves to be the real deal, and if the Hornets break their seven-year playoff drought and contend for championships in the future, Jordan will find vindication. However, if Miller disappoints and Henderson blossoms into a star, it will mark a complete failure for Jordan. But let's shift our focus to the present. Should the Hornets already be regretting their decision with the number two pick in the NBA draft? Some people seem to think so. Meanwhile, Scoot Henderson, the number three overall pick, had a scorching hot start in his debut at the Las Vegas Summer League. The dynamic guard for the Trailblazers lit up the Houston Rockets with 13 points in the first quarter alone, shooting an impressive 5 for 7 from the field. He also contributed three rebounds and three assists. NBA fans wasted no time in trolling the Hornets on social media following Henderson's strong performance. Meanwhile, Miller's outings in the California Classic were a bit more inconsistent. He scored 18 points in the Hornets' opener, but followed it up with a 6.7 assist game. Unfortunately, he also accumulated a combined total of 15 fouls. Keep in mind, there's a 10 foul limit in Summer League, and committed 10 turnovers across the two contests. It's undoubtedly too early to pass definitive judgment on the Hornets' decision, but NBA Twitter has already begun poking fun at the franchise. Ultimately, it's a waiting game to see how these young players develop and whether the Hornets will come to regret their choice. If you enjoyed this video and found the discussion interesting, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more captivating NBA content. Do you agree with the Hornets' decision? Who do you think will have a more significant impact on the league, Miller or Henderson? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and until next time.